I'm trying to hit all the levels of non-sexual intimacy, which is mental, spiritual, physical, all of those elements that we're, we're, we're all craving and we all need so badly. Welcome to this week's episode of Beauty Babble. Today, we're diving into the world of holistic wellness with Steph Steves. She's the founder of Cushley Wellness in Edmonton, where she creates safe spaces for relaxing and her services go beyond the traditional. Steph, thanks so much for joining us on the podcast today. I'll pass it over to you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about Cushley Wellness. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me on here. It's such a privilege to be here today with you. So basically, Kushli is, like you said, a safe space for women to come and uh, relax and rejuvenate. And I use different techniques like facial massage. I go into an intraoral buckle massage. We do meditation. We do breath. So usually each appointment starts that way with really grounding and breathing and meditating. And even though this is a massage, it's so much more than that. It's whole body wellness, mind, body, soul, all of the soothing things. So we start with that and then we go into the facial massage where we work out the tension, particularly in the jaw that we carry so so deeply. And we just fully release and relax the face, the upper chest. And then we move into gua sha. If you have ever seen these little tools, we do some, some gua sha. And then we go into a facial cupping just to really continue the circulation and the flow and the movement in the face and the release. And then we move into my favorite part, which is the therapeutic hairbrushing and combing, where it's literally as it sounds, I brush and play with your hair and massage your scalp and use different tools that I have to just really fully release. And then I end with something that I call koi. It's a it's a made-up word that my grandmother and my mother used, and it's just basically non-sexual, consensual touch. And it's just a different form of intimacy that I feel like so many people are missing right now. And it's just simply just gentle touch. And I use this little tracer and I trace the face and I go around all over the face. And it's amazing to just see the melt that occurs <laughs> on the bed and just like sort of a, oh, you know, and <clears throat> it's beautiful. And then we usually end with some more breath and then we come up into the back into our bodies and then usually everyone I have in here stays for a chat because <laughs> we're trying to really I'm trying to hit all the levels of non non-sexual intimacy which is mental spiritual physical and yeah just hitting all of those elements that we're we're, we're all craving and we all need so badly in our day-to-day -day lives so yeah I hope that made sense <laughs> oh that that's a lot I love it and I have to say that I did get a treatment with you and it was lovely and it really you yes you do all of that I didn't do the hairbrushing but the koi is that how you pronounce it yeah. yeah that I was telling Suzanne before this where I was like I was not sold on the koi and then you're like let me just try it I'm like okay it was so lovely. It was really so lovely. It is like, I think of when my, my kids were babies and I would just like gently, you know, stroke over their brows or that was like what it was like. And it was just like being cared for in a really just, yeah, it was great. I loved it. But yeah, yeah I'm sure Suzanne has a ton of questions. <laughs> I do I actually love everything that you said. It just, I mean, you just hit it right bullseye of the whole holistic side and how you bring it all together and I think that people forget in this industry that where this industry is all about touch it is. and we forget the the yeah. magic of touch oh, and it's why so it's so important yeah. how you do it and the energy that you create and and I know some people are like what do you mean it's like I remember you know explaining doing massage a facial massage to students and I said do you ever have yeah. that notion when you're finished with a client that your energy changed mm -hmm. and they're like well, what do you mean? So I explained, like maybe someone had a tension headache, maybe they had a bad day, someone was grumpy, you know, that type of thing. And then you finish and you're like a little off, like you kind of, what happened? But you don't recognize that connection. And that's why it's important to understand that whole energy side of it is, is crucial. Absolutely. Absolutely. I got to ask you, how did you get into this? 
what, like, tell us your journey. (laughs) So for me, it started because of postpartum. So I, I had a really challenging, anxious pregnancy, and then that transpired into my postpartum. And I think because it took me a long time to get pregnant, I was so terrified of losing this baby the whole time. And then that just, I think I was just set up to kind of fail in a way. And unfortunately, there's just nothing in place that's kind of like, do you have anxiety? Maybe we should be looking out for it in postpartum. And so when I had it, it wasn't just nobody really noticed. I didn't know what was going on. I also was extremely sleep deprived and I kind of put myself into a sleep deprived psychosis. And like, I just spiraled. I was not doing well. I, I, there was a time when I nearly didn't survive and it was dark. It was really dark. It was really, it was really isolating and lonely. And yes, I had my family and all these people around me, but I didn't know how to ask for help. I didn't know what I needed. I, I was just lost. I was just in a fog and I couldn't explain it. Luckily, in a split second decision, I didn't go through with it and I, I'm still here and I'm one of the stories of hope and um, getting through the dark. And so out of that trauma and out of that pain and darkness has come this deep, deep desire to be the light for women in postpartum. And I think I started thinking like, what would, what would, what would I have benefited from? And honestly, touch non-sexual, just, just being held and being given a space where I felt safe and honestly talking to other women who had experienced that darkness. Cause sometimes you think, oh my gosh, I'm having these horrible thoughts. People are going to think I'm crazy. I'm going to get committed to the you know hospital. And it's nice. To, it's just, I feel like it's such a gift that I've been given. I can now give that I can say, Hey, your darkness is not too dark for me. Come and sit in my space and feel held and feel safe and, and be touched. And as a mother, sometimes you get overtouched with a different type of touch and you need something, a type of touch that requires no exchange. <laughs> a child touches you. I want something usually. And, but you come here and it's, there's nothing that you have to do in exchange. You just lay and you're just, you know, just relaxed and hopefully made to feel a little bit better. So I don't just say- They're receiving, it's a receiving, they're receiving something. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, really passionate about it. And I really, really love it. And I kind of feel like I finally know what I was supposed to do in this uh, crazy world. And so what was your first like, dive into was it courses did you go experience it yourself like what was that next journey and by the way I thank you so much for sharing that because I think a lot of women forget the journey is tough (laughs) becoming a mom right I get it I get it so thank you for being so open about that yeah so two years ago I was trying to find uh, other forms of healing and working on my mental health and I met a massage therapist, Raja, and I don't normally talk in massage, but we chatted for the two hour massage that I had. And immediately I was like, I want to be exactly like this woman. Like she, she made me feel so safe, so heard, so felt, so everything. She just soothed me, not just my body, but my entire being. Like I was transformed that day. I just And I still see her and I still thank her and show her gratitude because she changed my life meeting her that day. And, and so from that day on, I just sought other women and I met other healers and natural, natural modalities. Isabel Doreen knows her. And, and then I ended up going to the wild roses festival. And when I was there, I met Christy who owns Juin and she's the one that did the training. And when she, we were sitting around a fire pit and she just happened to casually say, Oh, this is what I do. And I was like, I want to do that. And so I took her course last year in the beginning of February, and I'd already kind of set up my room in like the November. I was just, I was creating a space, but I didn't know what I was going to do yet. And then I did the training and then I was like, why am I not adding Koei and hairbrushing? People are going to think I'm totally weird, but you know what? I am weird. And I love that about myself. (laughs) And it's, I love having my hair brushed. It So many women come in and they say, oh my gosh, that reminded me of when I was a little girl. And that's exactly it. Going back to that childlike innocence and just comfort and release. I think it's just 
so beautiful. So I added those elements and now I do about a 50, 50. Some just come for the hairbrushing and the curly and some come for the massage and the facial massage and many come for both. So that's how it started. <laughs> I think you also, cause we met in a Reiki course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you've taken like kind of yeah. a different Modality. modalities of, and that which you kind of incorporate into your service as well. Right. Yes of a gift yes yes I, I really love the healing and the energy exchange of Reiki and yeah so much gratitude so I had taken that course before I even knew I was going to do this so that was one of the steps that I did before and I've been doing gua sha for years and I've been taking courses I took courses during COVID online on how to do gua sha and so that was really sim easy to add which Christy also teaches and then so yeah there was like a few things leading up to it I just wasn't sure what the final product would look like. And then it just, it was like magic. <laughs> so. That is so fun. I mean, and I don't want to say interesting because that doesn't sound, it just sounds, that's amazing when it, you know, it, you allowed kind of it to work out for you and you followed the path, I guess you could say, as you learned, but you, it sounds to me like you were slowly piecing together Mm -hmm. and honoring yourself of what you could give at the same time and how that all works together so I mean it sounds very easy to do but at the same time I think there was a lot of thought process in it for yourself and how you did it would that be fair to say yes definitely yeah. definitely yeah that is so interesting so when someone's come to you for the very first time and are they would you say a lot of the clients we talked beforehand a little bit that a lot of it's word of mouth, but is, has there anyone just kind of, I, I hate to say fall into your lap, which is a beautiful thing if that ever happens, but what do they think? How do they find you other than a, a referral? Like, has anyone found you outside of that? Yeah. So there, there has been, have been people that, cause now the buckle, the intra oral is becoming more and more popular. So there were, were people that searched it on Google and found me. And I think so I, I truly believe there is so much space in this world for every single person to provide any type of care. And so there are a number of choices. I think what, what drew, drew them to mine is, yes, with Buckle, you get the natural facelift. You get the natural lift. It releases these muscles that really kind of bring your face down, and it just gives you this sort of instant facelift. It's really beautiful. However, it's not the focus of my practice. It's not on not just the outer beauty, it's the inner, it's healing that inner part. And so I think they really liked that I was, you know, we do the breath, we do the meditation, we do the touch. And, and it's really a slow practice, my practice. So like a lot of women, they stay for three hours sometimes because they, I am, I have the luxury of this not being my full-time job and it's in my home. So I only book one, two, I mean, I've had three one time, but I don't think I'll do that again because I put so much energy into it mm. and it's, it's exhausting, of course. And so two, one in the morning and one in the evening is kind of my max because I can really prep and no one is rushed to leave this space. So they sit and they have a tea. And so she just loved that element. You know, after you get all warm and cozy, you're not okay, I completely understand why you have to do that in massage scenario. They have to have their multiple clients because that's how they pay their rent, you know? And I completely understand that. And I recognize the privilege that I have, that I have another job that allows me to do this as more of a passion. And so I can give that time. And so that's what she was wanting. So just as much as she needed what happened on the table, she needed what happened in the chair. Mm -hmm. And she just wanted somebody that, she could talk to and I'm not a therapist but I have a lot of empathy and understanding for anxiety and all of the things that you weren't expecting when you had a baby <laughs> and so and you know the grieving and all that happens when you think it's going to be this magical time which it is but it can also be <laughs> very traumatic <laughs> so that's she found yeah. me because of the more postpartum thing which was I was so happy about that <laughs> so yeah I'm going to jump in though, because you also don't just focus on postpartum women. No, 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 so not at all. Everyone all is welcome. Seasons of life, all seasons and, and everyone, like, even if you haven't had a baby, they, there's so much heightened anxiety right now mm -hmm. and just, and, and like a massive lack of, 
of touch. And like, there's a quote that says something like the best healing form is touch. Like we, we need to be touched every day. We need to be held. We need that compression. We need and so, no, I see the only people that I do not currently practice on are cis men. And that's simply because I don't feel called to do that. It's in my home and I just, I'm not, it's not my, my expertise. And so, but anyone else is so welcome. And I, I would say I see about 50, 50. So yeah, women from all walks of life and you don't just have to come if you're sad. <laughs> So we've come here, I've had a woman come here and we laughed the entire time and it was a celebration of her birthday, you know? So it can be, it can, it's not just sad and like <laughs> trauma. It's also there's cel cel and excitement, a new job, all of these t types of people come and they, they use this as a treat to themselves when they accomplish something wonderful. And I'm so excited to celebrate with them. So, yeah. I can't remember if you explained to our listeners, the meaning of Kushli, because I feel oh. like you really embody that in your business. Tell us a little bit about the word. Yeah, so my grandparents were Norwegian, and so we have a, we we use do a lot of Norwegian traditions and use some of the words. And I mean, maybe even Koi is. I've googled it so many times, I can't find anything like it. I really do think my grandma just made it up. But so I was looking for a word that really embodied like just the ultimate comfort and coziness and Kushli does that like it goes beyond just cozy and I think the reason that so many Norwegians are so happy there is because they live Kushli and it can be some as simple as like a practice of lighting a candle or sitting in front of a fireplace or drinking a like your favorite coffee and so it's it's a person, place, or atmosphere that just envelops the ultimate coziness and comfort and care. And I really hope I do the word justice because it is such a beautiful word. I know there's a Danish word that's like Huga or something. It's H-Y-G-G-E. I can never say, I never say it correctly, no matter how many times I Google translate it. And Me too. <laughs> my mind. For I just want to say Heige, personally. I know. And so that's the same word. I have a lot of books that revolve around that it's exactly the same comp you know when when you come to my house and we do like circles and stuff that's kushli that's like mm -hmm. that's what it is it's just every experience being cozy and warm and i just love the word it's my favorite word ever <laughs> it's awesome it's a perfect fit i wanted to ask you about what is it going to look like for you moving forward like what do you see yourself doing are you adding any more treatments how is it going to evolve because I know now you're you're doing this as a passion project do you see this becoming your full-time thing or are you just staying in this place for right now so for the time being I'm sort of staying in this space but I am hoping to move eventually my house is for sale I'm hoping to to get some land and you know create a space that I can facilitate for other women to bring in their gifts and their um offerings and while I give offerings they give offerings and I want to be able to facilitate more women and just have hold space for them and be that person so that is a huge dream and goal that I'm working towards it's definitely hanging on to this house being sold. I am also taking, I, I want to get into hot stone and I really only feel called to the chest and up and the arms. I won't do the legs or the feet right now. I don't feel like that's my area. I like to sit up by the head and really just focus on that part. I think it's just because of like the mind being there. Like I just really am up here type person. I don't feel called to do body massage or anything like that. So I do, I am really interested in hot stone, especially because it's so cold here. I love the element of bringing some warm, extra warmth because I do use cooling tools. So I have a lot of those, especially for the summer, but for the winter, I would love to add that element of just like, oh, that's so warm, you know, when your hands are freezing because I have freezing hands all the time. Me too. I'm looking into courses for that. And then I'm super interested in the Indian head massage and like the sacral, like cranial massage. And so that's something I would be really interested in because I love working on the head and I would love to be able to do full, longer head massages. I was just given the basic training, which I could mm. just do over and over again, but I would like to actually 
know more about that. So that's definitely on my 2024 to-do list. But at the moment, I don't feel any extreme rush because I really just, I just love doing this. And I just, yeah, I just really enjoy what, what what's going on right now. So <laughs> that's amazing. I just want to put my name in there for if you need to practice. Yeah, I know. Uh, full head <laughs> massage. Give me a call. I would love to support your practice. <laughs> yeah, I do need people like, like models to come and like, my friend was like, anybody would do it. I was like, no, I just feel bad. Like being like, Hey, can I just like take a bunch of pictures of your face and like do all the tracing and stuff? Cause I need like any bodies. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Well, so I, I will like, put change for like a yeah. facial massage. <laughs> That's great. Well, we're going to put your contact in for like your website and your social media handles. So um, if any of our listeners want to connect with you, they can do that. Um, and come see you for a service or be a model for you. I that also a- want to say it. with my pricing, because I'm so passionate about this and I want it to be affordable. I usually always offer a sale just to make it affordable for everyone. However, if somebody was listening and they were like, man, I could really, really use this because it's not covered by insurance. Sometimes the deterring factor is the cost. And so I always encourage people to just send me a message. Maybe they want to exchange services. You know, I've had people do my plant care and that's their service. That's their specialty. That's not my specialty. So I'm like, yes, keep my plants alive. Thank you. And so, and I'm happy to do that sort of exchange. I also do like scale pricing and, you know, just, I just want to make sure that if you feel like you need this, but you're like, right now it's just tight and I can't just send me a message because I totally understand that we go through different seasons. I've been in that season and in the seasons that I feel more bountiful, I, I want to be able to give back to those who need it. So yeah, I just wanted to make sure that that's no. That's amazing. That's on a, like a charitable aspect. That yes. Yeah. 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 Nice. That is amazing. I love your story. I love this story. I just, it's so unique. It, but yet I have to say, it's not, I mean, so many people go through what you went through, but where you led yourself, where you allowed yourself to go. Like, I loved how you said, it doesn't serve me to, to go below the chest. Like it's not there for me. And I think, I think we need to know that we don't have to do pedicures as I mean, not to knock pedicures down, right? We go into this industry. That's what uniqueness is unfortunately it's not regulated but it does allow you to focus on what you would love to do and give and that's that service that like you said the touch the service and Mm -hmm. and still doing it on a professional level Mm -hmm. and allowing you know you you've already said you've taken some training you've recognized you want more and deeper and that it's not just here and it's always evolving too so Yes, it's it's great to have that open mindedness to to carry forward and grow yourself in service, but also in knowledge. So I think that's really amazing. I love it. Stuff. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This has been so awesome. This is great. I'm so glad you were able to uh, come and chat with us. I can feel your warmth just through our conversations. I know our listeners are going to as well. And like I said, we'll put your contact information in the description for our episode. Yeah, this is so amazing. Great. Much I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to come get another treatment <laughs> personally. It was so <laughs> lovely. And, you know, in the name of research for the podcast, the things I do. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much for joining Thank us. And you. we'll be back next week. Thanks for listening to Beauty Babble.